It is week 12 here of the Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty, and we're just going to dive right in. I, um, I got a rush today, so let's go right to the uh, top stories. First of all, uh, Boomer Sooner, spirits are high in Norman as their suitors beat number 21 West Virginia. Big win for Oklahoma there. Uh, they move up to number 16. Alabama, stunned. They lose at, or at home against Mississippi State. As you look at that, uh, the Bulldogs built a 42 to 14 lead at the half, and then kind of hang on, uh, hung on till the end. Big win for Leach and his program there in Mississippi. Uh, Iowa does beat Purdue. We saw that. I think we saw at least one score in the game last week. So a big win there for the Hawkeyes. And it was uh, Cal beating Washington 41 to 10. And we'll see if the Bears get hosed out of a playoff appearance this year. Right now, they're ranked number four, so they're in, at least in the, through the coaches' poll. Uh, home field humiliation. Kansas quiets the home crowd with a shocking road win over Texas Tech. Uh, Texas Tech continuing to free fall a little bit there. Uh, Boilermakers lead major changes in the latest college football playoff rankings. They fell. Um, then we go to uh, Mississippi, or Penn State, Ohio State. Big game this week as the the uh, Buckeyes are looking to win the division, win the Big Ten. Penn State's probably out of the race, but that could still be a big win for them. And uh, sweet revenge as Arizona is, I'm not sure why I would say sweet revenge for you know, covering an injury, but there it is. Damien, Damien Sellers uh, of Arizona is injured. Uh, tough luck for him. We'll look at the top 25 real quick here. And number one is Texas A&M. Uh, they beat Western Kentucky last week. Number two is Florida after a win over South Carolina. And Arkansas beat Oregon 45-42, so they're number three. Cal is number four after the win over Washington. Vanderbilt beat Kentucky, so they're number five. Purdue, number six after falling uh, to Iowa. Iowa, number seven. Clemson's number eight. They beat Florida State 23-14. Uh, Michigan moves into the top ten after a win at Penn State. Washington is number 10 after losing to Cal. Nebraska uh, beats Iowa State. They move up to 11. Alabama, of course, fell to number 12. And there we are, Texas State. Look at that. Alabama, then Texas State uh, after we beat Louisiana last week. Uh, Texas Tech falls from 9 to 14 after the loss to Kansas. Auburn gets a win at Georgia as the Bulldogs. What an abysmal season they've had. I think they have five losses uh, as they lose this week uh, at home against Auburn. Oklahoma, of course, moves up to number 16. Kansas State beat Memphis, so they're number 17. Oregon, 18 after the loss to Arkansas. LSU is number 19. Kansas, number 20. Uh, Ohio State, 21. Penn State falls to 22. South Carolina fell to 23. Wisconsin, 24. And West Virginia is 25. So that is a look at top 25. We will look at the playoff rankings real quick just to get an idea of who's in. Florida, Texas A&M, Cal, Arkansas. Then you've got Iowa lurking right outside. Uh, Vanderbilt, Purdue still has a shot. Uh, Clemson, Washington, and Michigan round out the top 10. That is your college football playoff uh, ranking so far. Looking at the Heisman, as we see, Jimmy Arrington still leads, but uh, Haynes King made a move this week, uh, passing Jude and Williams, who fell, uh, obviously. Uh, Mike Wright, the quarterback from Vanderbilt, is at uh, fifth in the Heisman watch. And looking at, we'll first look at the Sun Belt Conference standings. Uh, if we look at the East, uh, Coastal Carolina pretty much has locked things up. They beat FIU, um, so they've got the, the um, uh, tiebreaker, and uh, they only have to play Appalachian State. Even if they lose to Appalachian State, again, they have a tiebreaker at FIU. So Coastal Carolina is in, and we also can be in uh, with a win this week against Louisiana Monroe. We do still have to play UTSA. But uh, all we have to do is win one of those two. And even if we lose both, there's still the possibility that Monroe could lose to South Alabama or to Louisiana. And that would be it. So, um, yeah, I, right now Monroe is the only team that has a chance at us. And that is who we play this week. We will real quick look at the uh, schedule for the Sun Belt Conference. 
And of course, our game at Monroe, you've got Arkansas State going to UTSA, Georgia Southern going to FIU, Coastal Carolina, a late uh, non-conference matchup. They go out west to take on USC. So that's a big matchup, a chance for them to you know, carry the Sun Belt flag. South Alabama goes to Louisiana. App State goes to Florida, another late uh, non-conference matchup there. And then Troy to Georgia State. Uh, that is the look around the Sun Belt. So let's look at recruiting. Uh, recruiting, we got a couple commitments, uh, which is big news. Uh, we'll slide on down here to see uh, Andrew Roden, middle linebacker, and Robert House. That really is that eliminates all of our needs. And I think we have 10 signings now. So I might, I'm gonna probably going to sign a couple more and then drop everybody else off the list. Um, obviously, a 10, t a 10 player uh, signing class is not. You know, it's, it's not big, but we were going for quality this year, and I felt like we got there. Our lowest-rated player is a 64 in quarterback Allen Sanders. So I feel like we did good. Now, we did lose out on Jason Marshall, uh, although we kind of expected it. As you can see, we are 4,800 points behind. Um, Andrew Roden was another uh, – sorry, Mike Brooks was a guy who we had – I did not – I don't think I put a single point towards him all year. I just had him on my list as kind of a, a safety but I never really put anything to him. So he visited North Texas last week and committed. Um, so not a big loss as far as I'm concerned there. Not worried about, um, I would like to have had the Marshall, but don't mind losing him. Um, we are actually pretty highly ranked right now. We're 18th, but we'll slide down because we're not gonna sign very many more. This was not a big class and we always knew that. So not too worried about that. So what about Louisiana Monroe? Well, Louisiana Monroe comes in at four and five. We'll look at their schedule. Uh, they um, lost their first three games at Texas A&M at home, Detroit, and then at West Virginia. Um, but then they went on a pretty nice little run. They beat FIU and then the two Georgia schools. They lose at Notre Dame, but beat UTSA. So they were four and one in the conference going into last week, but they got ran off the field by Arkansas State. And the reality is, as we look at their roster, they have they have been have they have been devastated by injury. Uh, it's kind of a sad situation for them, really. Uh, I, I guess that's what happens when you when you, you know, load up your schedule with good teams. Uh, their starting quarterback Hayes Crockett is out, so that means they're going to have Lorenzo Thompson, who obviously is not as good. Although he does, he's decent speed. Not you know he's not he's not terrifying as far as scrambling ability, but. The way our defense is, he probably will be able to, you know, get some yards. Their starting running back, Riley, is also injured. So they're they're down to their backup, Ray McFarland. And when he goes out, it drops all the way down to a 68 overall in Michael Marks. Uh, fullback, they have a decent fullback in Anthony Burns, and he is a freshman. So, you know, he's going to be there for four years. Um, I've never seen in NCAA football a fullback lead early. So uh, have a true freshman at 76. He's going to end up in the 90s, in the mid to upper 90s. Um, receivers, uh, McWilliams, uh, Cavill, and Jameel Rice, they're not super fast. So I feel like if they're going to if, you know, be effective at the passing game, it's going to be a lot of short, methodical stuff. I'm not really worried about, as worried about them going deep. Obviously, our secondary is not super great. Uh, th their tight end, Noah Patty, is good. He's at 87, but he's injured. Uh, I think he is questionable. I don't remember. I'm trying to, there's, um, yeah, the tight end is questionable, so he may still play. Um, but if not, you know, their next guy is Manny Cooper, 74, not as good. Their um, offensive line, left tackle, 79. Their left guard is a 77, and he's injured. Uh, he is probable, so he is supposed to play. But um, obviously, he probably won't be as effective. Their backup is a 70. Their center is an 83. Right guard 72, right tackle 77. So their offensive line is not one that's just going to absolutely mow us down. Uh, although they probably still will be able to open up holes on RD. Uh, they play a 3-4. Uh, offensively, by the way, they run a pro-style offense. Their defense is a 3-4. So they have a 79 left end, 77 right end. So their ends are not, um, I guess, too you know, dominant. But their t defensive tackle, Ivy, is okay, 82. Um, left outside linebacker is an 88. Middle linebackers are 71 and 78. And then uh, their right outside linebacker is a 78. So they're better on the outside right, than they are uh, in the middle. So then we go to cornerback. They're, they're, you look at their secondary, not super great. They are, you know, they have decent speed. Johnson is a 91. 
Um, but, you know, they overall, uh, this is not one of the best secondaries we've played. Their free safety is an 82, and their strong safety is an 87. So on the back end, they're going to be okay. Kicker is a 72. Punter is a 75. So injuries um, definitely, uh, you know, are going to affect them. Uh, their quarterback out. They're running. They're starting running back out. Uh, they have a, a lineman who is, you know, nursing an injury, and then a, deep, a tight end who is probable. Um, last season we beat this team 38 to 17. So, um, but again, you know, I don't think we could just write them off. We're not good enough to write anybody off. Uh, and you know, like you, you look at the ratings. They're still they're on paper they're they're a little better than us, but we do anticipate a victory today. Looking at the stats, they um, you know, average losing by a touchdown, but they've had a tough schedule. Uh, Their passing defense, 69th. Um, rush defense is obviously not very good, but again, they've played some good teams. Uh, offensively, they're struggling. A lot of that, though, is obviously going to be because of their injuries. They do have a visiting prospect in, wide receiver Trey Hunter, so hopefully we can embarrass them so that he doesn't sign with them. Uh, if you look, the three stars, pretty good. Uh, their top players, Atkins, Callaghan, and Patty. Although Patty, he's injured, but he is expected to play. Um, then, of course, for us, Fel Felder, Bailey, and Dukes. We need Felder to have a good game. Um, we don't. What we, want, what we want to do is jump on them early and get this game over with. We don't want to, you know, you, you, at the wounded animal. You know, you don't want to let them hang around. You just want to finish them off. And uh, they certainly are a wounded animal. As we look at the injury report, um, they're running back and quarterback out. Lifeguard probable, tight end questionable. So, uh, yeah, situation looks good for us. And so here we are in Monroe, Louisiana, to see the Bobcats take on the Louisiana Monroe Warhawks. And uh, interesting little bit of history, the Texas State head coach, who, of course, is Casey Clawson, his first game in college with Tennessee uh, was the first action that he saw on the field was against... Louisiana Monroe and actually I was at the stadium that day it was a wet day rainy day unfortunately in our game here it is not wet it's actually pretty nice out apparently um, but Casey Clawson came on his first play which he came on as a sub uh, it was a day when Tennessee was rotating a lot of players obviously they were a much stronger team they would end up winning the game 70 to 3 so Clawson comes in pretty sure it was the first half uh, after it was after a Louisiana Monroe turnover uh, and his first pass was a 19-yard touchdown pass. So one pass into his career, he was one for one for 19 yards at a touchdown. Uh, pretty sure it was to David Martin. Um, so a little interesting history here as he will now lead Texas State against that Louisiana Monroe program. Second and 10 for Felder in the Texas State offense. And Felder throws a complete pass to Craig Miller. That's 15 yards. That'll be a first down. Just kind of a post route. Felder finds him for the first down. Third and goal. Felder will hand this one off to Carter, who gets down to the one yard line. That's going to make it a decision for the Bobcats here. Fourth and goal. Texas State's going to go for it. Why not try to? And man, he would get in there. Keith Mitchell takes the handoff after the motion and will score. That will put Texas State up 6 0. First drive of the game. Very impressive drive. So it'll be interesting to see what Texas State does as Louisiana Monroe obviously devastated by injury. Their starting quarterback Hayes Crockett is out. So Lorenzo Thompson will actually get to start. He hands off to Ray McFarland, their backup running back. Thompson this time from the gun. He's got three receivers to his left. One of those though is the tight end. Ooh, and Thompson going long. He overshoots his man. So over two to start for the backup Thompson. Third and seven. We need the 37 yard line. Felder in trouble, and he sacked. Drop for an eight-yard loss. That was a, either a coverage sack or a Felder needs to get rid of the ball sack. <laughs> yeah, that's that was not intentional. 
from the shotgun this time. Thompson brings a receiver in motion. He'll throw across the middle. It's complete. Got some space, but uh, Williams will be just short, three yards short of first on that 10-yard reception. Felder, we're going to hand it off this time. Carter goes up the middle, pushes off a defensive lineman. Oh, and then fumbles. Monroe has it, and that set them up with a great field position. Oh, watch out. From the gun, Thompson brings a tight end from right to left. And he's going to throw. And it's in. Across the middle, couldn't find his target, so that's going to bring it to the fourth down. Big stop for the Bobcats. This time, Felder hands it off to Carter again. Carter gets the first down. Great run there. 12 yards. He drug a defender along with him. Felder to try to convert on this third and inches. Louisiana Monroe blitzes. Felder's going to run for it. He will get it and slide after picking up a few yards. All right, come on, Ben. Louisiana Monroe showing a blitz, but they back off of it. And Felder completes the pass across the middle, but it's only for seven yards. Horn makes the catch. It'll be fourth and three. As that comes, that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Texas State, a little uneven on offense, but the defense has been dominant. Despite a turnover that put Louisiana in wrong good territory, Texas State would got to stop. So gutsy play call here by Clawson. It's fourth and three. They need the 37. They're at the 40. Empty backfield for Felder. He's going to throw. Across the middle, it's complete to Craig Miller. That'll be a first down. Third and six. They need the four yard line. Felder. Come on, Ben. Gets a complete. Oh, no. Miller drops it. Had it in his hands and dropped it. So Duke's here to make it 10 to nothing. And it's good. Right down the middle. So out of the broken eye. Thompson is in trouble. And he is sacked. Texas State brought a zone blitz that time. The first attempt was uh, Thompson managed to get away from, but he couldn't get away from John Weber. And Weber brings him down for an eight-yard loss. That'll make it third and 17. Thompson now from the gun. He's got two receivers to his left. He will fake the handoff and keep on the read option. And he'll be stopped just short. It, ha it looked promising, but Texas State defense came up big when they had to. First and 10, Miller in motion. Play action, he swings out to Miller who runs backwards, but then turns it back upfield and gets a nice gain. That's 15 yards for Craig Miller on that reception. You watch here. He was the man in motion. Felder gets it right to him. And then Miller, for whatever reason, decides to go the wrong way, but the defender misses the tackle, and then he picks up 15. So third and seven for Texas State. Now, and about the 20. Let's see if Felder can convert this slant route, and it's batted away. Defender made a nice play on it, so we'll have to kick a field goal. And the kick is up. And good. Dukes made both of his attempts so far. Hopefully he can keep that going. He is one of the nation's best kickers, at least most productive. Thompson here trying to convert here. Hand off to, that's not McFarland. Oh, he's gone. Oh, you pick him from behind, thankfully. It's Michael Marks. That's actually their third team running back. And good blocking by Louisiana Monroe on that flag. Create, opened up a big hole and got him space Again, under center, tight end moves from right to left for Thompson. Makes an adjustment, then takes the snap, hands it off. This is McFarland, and McFarland, another good hole by the Louisiana Monroe offensive line. He picks up 18 yards, and they're down in the red zone now. Second to 12, Thompson will come under center. One back, he brings a receiver from his right, and then the pitch, and McFarland drop in the backfield for a four yard loss. It'll be third and 16. In this play, Thompson has no backs. He's got one tight end, and two receivers across the middle on each side. His pass across the middle is dropped. But that'll make it four down. So on fourth and 16, Louisiana Monroe will attempt the field goal. This will be about a 46 yard attempt. It's down, the kick is up, and it's no good. So Monroe had something going on that drive, but couldn't convert on that third and long, and field goal attempt is just short. Third and two, handoff again to Carter. He will get the first down this time. Shoves off a defender, gets across midfield, picks up 15 on that carry. That's a man's run right there. 
First down. It's kind of a Mike Alstott run. An empty backfield here on third and 11 for Texas State. Felder needs the 20. He's in trouble immediately, but he gets the pass away. And it is complete to Jacob Horn for 12 yards. That'll give him a first down in the red zone. Feller with third and 10 from the 18. He is going to pass. And it's complete to Miller who gets the first down. And there's a flag. Tell me it's not holding. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. So that'll give us the ball to the three-yard line. Big penalty. So... <laughs> Louisiana Monroe piling up in the middle, but this time Mitchell will get around to the right side and he'll get into the end zone. Texas State goes up 19 with the extra point on the way. Less than a minute to go in the half. Oh, we got an intense game between uh, UTSA and Arkansas State. The Roadrunners are winless in Sunbelt play, so this could be their first ever Sunbelt victory as uh, they just joined the conference this year. Arkansas State, they want to have a chance at a 500 record. They're going to have to pull that one out. And that'll be the end of the first half as Texas State leads 20-0. to zero. Not a bad half. Defense is the story as they have just absolutely shut down the Warhawk offense. For the Bobcats on offense, um, Felder has been some drops. Um, Monroe is doing, for as little as they're getting done uh, on offense, they are managing to keep Texas State's offense off the field. And Texas State has stalled out on a couple drives. They've been forced to kick a couple field goals. Uh, Felder, uh, he's been mostly on target. It's just been a matter of dropped passes that have really kind of stalled out the Texas State passing game. But Carter has sort of taken the slack and uh, gotten some big yards on the ground. We should see uh, the starting running back coming back in the second half, uh, whose name escapes me at the time. Oh, Philip James. He should be coming back. But you look at the numbers. Um, 142 yards. Texas State used to having more passing yards than that and a half. Not having 70, uh, that many rushing yards. So Look at that team defense. Only 102 yards given up in the first half. They've got three sacks, uh, only four yards per play. Texas State doing a great job on D. Thompson here, second and nine. He's got out of the eye and three receivers. He ends it off right up the middle. That's McFarland with a nice game. Gets off a tackle and will get close to midfield. 23-yard carry. The running game has been there for Monroe. The problem is Lorenzo Thompson has not been able to balance it with a passing attack. Thompson on third and three. He brings a receiver in. Texas State blitzes and gets to him. It's a fumble, and the Bobcats recover. Lorenzo Thompson just struggling today. If you can't help but wonder if Monroe had had their starting quarterback, Hayes Crockett, if they would not have been able to make a better game of this. This fumble will give Texas State great. Here we see Felder from the gun. First down here in Louisiana Monroe territory. He will throw, nope, he's going to take off. He will get a foul. Well, he gets off a tackle, gets off another. And he fumbles, but it rolls out of bounds at the 28. Felder, first down here. He's going to throw. It's complete on the slant round. That's Horn. That'll be a first down. You have Jacob Horn with his fifth catch. Now from the 18. Felder to throw. He, he's got Horn wide open for the touchdown. 18-yard touchdown pass for Ben Felder, and that will really kind of put the, uh, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for Monroe to get back into this game. Thompson is now going to have to start passing. Arkansas State has taken the lead there in the fourth quarter as they try to get that uh, all-important win against UTSA. You don't want to be the only team that somebody beats as the Red Wolves lead by his touchdown with 10 minutes to go. Look at the Pacific Life game summary. It's pretty one-sided, as you can tell. Uh, it's all Texas State right now. Louisiana Monroe, they've got some Thompson now. you got to imagine that Louisiana Monroe's got to start throwing the ball. Thompson will pass across the middle. That's complete. That's complete to, I think that's Mars. No, Rice. Complete to Rice for 10 yards. Farland now has Monroe in Texas State territory. They're down at the 37. Drops back to pass, and that was complete. And 
see there's a flag. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Roughing the passer on that pass to McWilliams. So that will give Monroe the ball at the 13. Second down and eight from the gun this time. Thompson trying to get Monroe on the board. Trailing 27 to nothing. Across the middle, that's complete, and that's going to be a touchdown. That's Jamil Rice, wide open. 11-yard touchdown catch. And Louisiana Monroe not going away quietly here. Another to throw. To his right. Oh, he's got Horn on the wheel route, and Horn makes the catch, pulls it down, and gets tackled immediately, but he gets 16 yards. Big play there for Texas State. Wait. Second down and six from the 33. Farland looks to the side, or Felder looks to the sideline. He sends a uh, Burgess in motion, and he's going to throw long. He's got a man in the end zone. That's a touchdown. Danny McDowell, 33 yards out. Texas State. What a way to answer that Monroe touchdown drive. Big play there. As we look at Ben Felder's numbers, Second half, looking pretty good so far. Thompson again with three receivers, a tight end, and a back. He this time will take off, and he's going to have the first down. He gets 13 yards. You really see our lack of team speed when the other team's quarterback takes off. And now from the gun, empty backfield, Thompson will throw. Texas State blitzes and almost got to him, but Thompson gets it away to McWilliams for 11 yards. Thompson here has got a bunch to his right. Second and 11. He drops back to pass, throws to his left. He's got a man open. That's complete. Kevill is tackled, uh, knocked her down after a 17 yard reception. That's going to put Louisiana Monroe first to goal. As Lorenzo Thompson is apparently found his rhythm. Brings his receiver from right to left. That gives him two on the left, one on the right. Handoff to McFarland. McFarland finds a hole and gets into the end zone from six yards out. Louisiana Monroe scores again. It'll now be 34 to 14 after the extra point going in. And it is a final score. Arkansas State hangs on, beats UTSA 49 to 42. Texas San Antonio, that, that will be our next opponent, and they'll come in with no wins in the Sun Belt Conference. Feller now on first and ten. He'll take the snap, and it's a quick bubble screen out to Horn, who makes the catch, gets off a couple of tackles, and will get the first down. Ten-yard run there by Horn after the catch. First and ten at the 34 now for Texas State. Handoff to Philip James, who finds a big hole, and he fumbles. He had the first down, and then he fumbled. Two fumbles by Texas State running backs. And that's the end of the third quarter. This game is not over yet. Louisiana Monroe is trying to make something of it as Texas State leads 34-14 heading into the last period of play. From the gun, Thompson here. Takes the snap. Texas State blitzes. They had a couple men, but Thompson finds that Cavill. Yes, Cavill on the go route. 29 yards. That's a big play. That's a big play. Gutsy play call. Great run. Great throw. Louisiana Monroe now set up once again in the Texas State red zone. So third and 17, three receivers, two backs here for Thompson. He will throw across the middle. It's complete but to Cavill, but Cavill will not get the first down. That's going to make it fourth down. What does Monroe do here? Louisiana Monroe, probably the right thing to do. There, like a field goal doesn't really change things very much. So Thompson here to throw. He throws it up, and it's complete to Cavill into the end zone. He just kind of lobbed it there into some space and Cavill is able to come down with it and now Louisiana Monroe will be within two scores. Really kind of threaded a needle there. First down now at the 36. Cutter will throw, is in a little trouble. Swings it out to James who, who uh, makes a couple shifty little moves to get the first down but there's a flag. Push foul, roughing the passer, defense. defense. So that will get Texas State well into Louisiana Monroe territory. Third down and one, Felder hands it off. Up the middle, James. Big gaping hole. He'll have the first down after a 12-yard carry. And we've got the Emory Henry formation for Felder. He throws a quick screen out to his left. That is complete. 
And after almost getting tackled, I think that's McDowell turns it up into the end zone. And Texas State takes a 20-point lead here. The extra point will make it 20. And that'll pretty much put this game out of reach for Warhawks. So we look at this lockdown defense. Texas State the defense has not really locked anything down recently. But uh, they do have five sacks on the day. One fumble forced. So on third and five, Thompson will fake the handoff. He'll keep it. And he's got a lot of room. He's going to get, this is a big run here by Thompson. 32 yards on that carry inside Texas State 40. And Lorenzo Thompson's had a huge second half. Got to give him credit where it's due. So third down and 12, Thompson's got a bunch formation to his right. He's going to pass. Throws it across the middle. It's complete and he's just short. But you got to, I mean, they've got to go with it. Fourth and inches. Thompson brings a receiver from left to right. Makes a little adjustment, and it goes nowhere. Marks is tackled in the backfield. Texas State had blitzed, so Nixon was there to make the stop, and the Bobcats will take over. So Texas State from their own 31. Handoff to James up the middle. He will get a big carry there. Felder here from right at midfield. Quick screen to his left this time, and Hall gets around the side. He's going to get a big game on that screen. He gets 18 yards. It's first and 10. It'll be on inside the 35, close to the 33 here. As we see, nice seal block there by Miller. Blocks off two uh, Warhawk defenders. Second down and four yards to go for Felder here. And he throws to his right. He gets Horn, who gets away from a tackle. And another. Up to about the 12-yard line. Nice work there by Horn. Horn's had a big day. 11 catches, 115 yards. Second down and six. Felder here has play action. And he's going to run for it. He's got some space. He will score. He gets it into the end zone. Caps off what has been a good game for Felder. And South Alabama with a big win over Louisiana as the Jaguars move to 4-6. And, and the Raging Cajuns fall to the same record. That will do it as we look at Ben Felder's uh, production. 368 yards, four touchdowns. He did have a fumble. But what a great game today. Uh, it's the te Texas State. Takes care of Louisiana Monroe. Uh, Felder wins player of the game. He did have a great game. Can't, can't take that away. He did it uh, Did it in the air. He also had some big runs that uh, really kind of made the difference. Especially, it really it, it deflated that comeback attempt by Louisiana Monroe. The Warhawks started getting back into this game. It looked like they might actually make a chance. 34-21. But Ben Felder, his play, made sure that it would get no closer than that. As Texas State secures the Sunbelt Conference Western Division title. And they'll now look ahead to the conference championship. And then who knows what else. As they are right now ranked number 13, they could slide into the top 10 and make something interesting happen. Game stats tell the story as we looked 48-21. Uh, first downs, Texas State had 28 to their 19. Uh, Louisiana Monroe really struggled in the first half, but credit to their offense, to Lorenzo Thompson, who is the number two quarterback who's had to step in after the injury to their starter today after a really awful start throwing the ball. He got things turned around, and he got Louisiana Monroe into the game. Uh, but it was too little too late as Texas State uh, would outgain them 486 to 402. Uh, 8 of 13 on third down for Texas State, and then 2 of 2 on fourth down. It meant that basically they were 10 of 13. Uh, meanwhile, Louisiana Monroe, 5 of 13 on third downs. That is the third down play, obviously big. That's an important stat in football, I think. And uh, in this a game like this, it definitely makes a difference. It's one of those stats where it, you, you can look at it and see that you know in a game where maybe you know 80 yards that's not that big of a difference right but then you look at third down conversions and um such an important stat and today it definitely was a difference in this game uh red zone play texas state five touchdowns out of six appearances and one field goal um but you know louisiana monroe scored touchdowns in all of their red zone appearances but they just didn't get as many um two fumbles by texas state 
thankfully, the defense was able to stop Louisiana Monroe in one, and pretty sure, I don't remember what happened yet. I think Louisiana Monroe actually scored on the second one. Um, but Texas State able to overcome that turnover difference. And so, um, and you know what, something interesting, let's go back. I missed, should have looked at this. Time of possession. Louisiana Monroe led in time of possession. Um, that's something that we're not used to seeing. Usually we do pretty well in time of possession. Uh, but they, because they ran, you know, slower pro-style offense, um, they were able, that's Bloomgren style, uh, they were able to sort of control time possession. And so probably kept us from ha from uh, getting the ball more. But, you know, that's what you got to do, I guess, when you're, when you're, uh, you know, your top skill position players are injured. Um, but Felder, 43-56, that's a good day. Three touchdowns, 76%. That's a really solid performance uh, out of him, especially when you consider the fact that we were we did not have as much time of possession. Uh, Carter had to fill in for James for a good part of the game. He carried the ball eight times for 58 yards, but James did get 48 on his own on his six carries. Felder, meanwhile, had one rushing touchdown, and Keith Mitchell played the touchdown vulture roles. Came in four carries for two touchdowns. Um, receiving Horn, the big he was the big uh, receiver of the day. 115 yards receiving, big day for him. He also had a touchdown. Uh, he deserved that. Miller though, 10 catches for 81 yards. Those are the two best receivers on our squad. So we prefer to sort of spread it out, balance it a little more. Um, but still, can't complain when your two best guys are your also your most productive. Uh, Hall caught six passes for 45. James four for 24. McDowell four for 46. And then Dixon, 3 for 15. So uh, not a bad day receiving. Defensively, uh, Manuel led the team with 14 tackles. That's pretty standard. He always leads the team in tackles. He also had five TFLs. Big day for him. Uh, he had a couple sacks as well. Brian Wright, All-American, with a couple sacks. Uh, Ernest Archer had a sack, and as did John Weber. No picks. But we did have uh, Josh Emanuel did force a fumble that was recovered by Zion Nixon. Um, so that's our defensive stats. Dukes made both of his field goal attempts, but the longest was 38. Um, made all of his extra points, and he had one punt for 53 yards. So a big win for Louisiana Monroe over Louisiana Monroe for Texas State. And the Bobcats now look ahead. Um, gotta say, the right now the sky's kind of the limit. Uh, you know, they're being a little disrespected in the polls, but that's what you expect when you're a Sun Belt team. Um, but we want to keep building the program. We want to make them the dominant program in the Sun Belt. And this was a big step. Louisiana Monroe is our last remaining major hurdle. And we cleared that hurdle, so we are now the division champs. So make sure you tune in next episode as we will be taking on our, our in-state rival, UTSA. This is Vol Force One signing off. I will see you guys next time.